Major League Baseball's opening day was last Thursday on March 30th. And if you're anything like me, you are completely lost. <laughs> so I did some research so that you don't have to. My name's Olivia and welcome to Sports 101 Baseball Edition. This is a baseball diamond. It has first, second, and third base, home plate, and a pitcher's this mount. This is the outfield, and this is the infield. This is where we'll see the defensive players. On the bases, or at home plate batting, we'll see the offensive players. The goal of the offense is to hit the ball anywhere on this part of the field that will be as far away from the defense as possible, giving them time to run to first base and ideally all the way beyond touching each of these bases and going back to home plate. Score a run for their team. The goal of the defense is to get the offense out in any manner that they can. This can include retrieving the ball and getting it back to any of these bases, tagging the players, or striking them out, all of which I'll talk about later. But, bef but before we get into that, we need to talk about the structure of the game. When we start the game, we are at the top of the first inning because we're in the first half of that inning. After the offensive team gets three outs, we enter the bottom of the inning, at which point the offense and the defense switch positions. Once this team gets three outs, they will switch again and enter the top of the second inning. After nine innings, whoever has the most runs wins the game. Now, let's first start with the offense. So, the batter will go up to home plate and stand in either one of these two boxes. These are the batter's boxes, and whichever one he chooses depends on which arm he wants to bat with. What he wants to do is to hit the ball that the pitcher throws so that he can make it to first base and all of the bases beyond, hopefully. The bases are safe zones for the players where they cannot be tagged out by the defense. Now, the pitcher wants to throw a good pitch, meaning it ends up in an imaginary box right around here called the strike zone. If the ball that the pitcher throws does not end up in the strike zone and the batter does not swing at it, it's called a ball. If the batter swings and misses no matter where the ball ends up, that is called a strike. The batter can also get a strike if the pitcher throws it into the strike zone and he does not swing. Now, if the batter hits it, many things can happen. One thing that could happen is the batter hits a foul ball. A foul ball happens when the batter hits the ball and it just ends up outside of these baselines. Another thing that can happen is that the ball could be caught by a defensive player. This results in an out for that team. Or, the player can bunt the ball, meaning he just, oop, tapped it right down in front of him. This means all, the all of the defensive players who were spread out waiting for a far hit have to run in so that they can get that ball. The batter could also hit a base hit, meaning he bats it likely somewhere in the outfield, giving him time to run to one of the bases. Or, if the batter hits it over the back wall in between two yellow poles, called the foul poles because they're in line with the baselines, that is an automatic home run. And he can run all three bases and back to home plate, scoring a run for his team without being tagged out. So, what is the defensive team doing during all this time? Well, I talked about the pitcher already. He wants to throw the ball to the catcher in a manner that tries to strike out the batter. If the pitcher is unsuccessful and the ball is hit, the ball will be retrieved by defensive players who will try to get the offense out. This can happen by the player having the ball with his foot on the base before the batter can get there, or the defensive player can tag the offensive player with the ball. He cannot throw it at him, but he can touch him with it. One thing that is interesting is that the runner does not have to be on the safety of his base in between bats. He can decide to lead off of the base without the pitcher noticing. If the pitcher notices, he can throw the ball to the baseman to try to get this player out. If the runner is successful to making it to the next base without getting out, he will do what is called stealing a base. And here's an example of that. Everyone's focused on the batter and the pitcher, but this player was able to make it to his next base before that player was able to tag him out. This 2023 season of Major League Baseball is going to be a special one because we're seeing the introduction of three new rules. The first of which is the addition of a pitch timer. 
if there are offensive players on the bases, the pitcher has 20 seconds to pitch the ball to the batter. However, if the bases are empty, the pitcher has only 15 seconds. We're also seeing an increase in the size of the bases. They used to be 15 inches square. Now we're going to see that size increase to 18 inches square. This is to increase safety because that additional space gives players more room to play and can reduce the collisions that could happen on that base. With the base size increasing and the addition of the pitch timer, stealing bases will likely become more common. We're also seeing the introduction of defensive shift limits. This means that there must be at least four players in the infield and two players must be on either side of second base and these players cannot switch sides. A big thank you to all of these sources that I used. All right, that's all I have for you today. Until next time, this has been Sports 101 presented by Head Sports Night. See ya.